Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So, during the winter, the workshop, it's absolutely freezing. You come in on the morning, you don't want to touch anything, it's too cold and it's not good. So I've done some research on YouTube and everyone's talking about the Chinese diesel heater. So I've went and picked one up, I want to show you how I've installed it and some of the modifications I've made. Let's get to it. So this is the one I've gone for folks, it's the 8 kilowatt version, comes complete with digital control panel and display, four ducting ports on the front to allow you to attach ducting and direct the airflow where you want it. It comes with a small remote control on, off and up and down, also an onboard fuel tank which contains 5 litres. In this video I'll be modifying the tank shortly so stay tuned. So underneath there are ports for the combustion air in and also the exhaust, which also comes included. Small snag is that because this is designed for motorhomes and caravans, it actually runs on 12 volts. So it's not a problem in the workshop here because we can just buy a 12 volt transformer and get it all wired up. So the tank what's come with a diesel heater, it's a little bit small. Sometimes some cheap fuel comes along and you want to take advantage. Secondly, when I want to put the heater, it's really awkward to fill up. So that being said, we're going to weld up our own fuel tank. So for the fuel tank, we're going to use a scrap gas cylinder. Now we're going to fill this up with water first, make sure all the propane is out of it before we do any work on it. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to install the outlet pipe of the tank at the bottom here and that means removing this little piece of uh, foot so we're going to cut that away using a grinder and then we can mark for the hole what needs to be drilled so to be able to screw fittings into the bottom of the tank we're going to weld in one of these threaded bushings these often are a quid each and come really in handy when we're doing this sort of thing so at the outlet at the bottom we're going to use a quarter inch bsp bushing here and for the filler cap we're going to use a one inch male threaded fitting which we're going to weld to the top here so we'll just cut that hole for that fitting now So it looks like that all fits nicely and after a quick clean up with a grinder we'll move on to the vent at the top we're going to use another quarter inch bsp bushing welded into the original thread for this the original thread where the gas cylinder valve was just needs opening up here with a hole saw so all the holes are cut we're all ready for welding we're just going to tig weld these bushings and fittings onto this cylinder now The welds are not really pretty, but they'll do the job in this case. So one of the problems we're using a gas cylinder for a fuel tank is you don't know how much fuel is in there. So the idea now is we're going to mount a clear plastic pipe on the outside connected to the top and the bottom of the cylinder. And this will allow us to see how much fuel is in the tank. We're going to use some 10 mil round bar just to support this clear plastic tubing so we can tie wrap it onto the onto the side of the cylinder nice and neat you'll see what i mean in a minute so that's all the welding complete now next step is we're going to pressure test this using some compressed air with some leak detector basically it's just soapy water spray that on and we'll be able to see if there's any leaks All looking good there. Next step, give it a lick of paint. So we're using some pneumatic fittings here. We've got an elbow for the vent at the top of the cylinder and a T-piece for the bottom. We're going to connect the both of them together with some clear plastic tubing now. 
evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working here today is evidence of that. So we're going to make a nice tidy job underneath here with some cable ties and then we're going to make an adapter which will go from 6mm pneumatic fitting through to the white plastic fuel line that we installed on the diesel heater earlier. So now we're going to go back to the diesel heater and reconfigure the fuel line so it wants to take fuel from our new tank and not the tank that's already there. Let's do it. So when we take a look inside you can see the fuel line travels from the tank into the pump and then round the side and then underneath into the burner. I'm going to disconnect the fuel line at the tank just before the pump and then pass the fuel line out of the casing to the back of the unit. Next I'm going to connect some of this white plastic hose to the fuel line that we've just passed out the back of the casing. This hose will eventually be connected to our new tank. So it's all put back together now, next job is installing the exhaust to the bottom of the unit. A little tip for you here folks, a sharp 90 degree bend is required on the exhaust on the underside of the unit and I've achieved this using a broom handle to bend this exhaust pipe and it works great. Nice little design feature here, there's a little slot so you can get the screwdriver in to tighten up the Jubilee clips, very nice. So like I said, we're going to put the unit under the workbench here. We're going to need to cut a 25mm hole in the brickwork to get the exhaust out. I don't deny there's some strange evolutionary process going on. But mankind won't be destroyed. The fact that you and I are working together is just installing the muffler for the exhaust pipe here. Now I'm lucky that I've come out in the middle of a stack of old bricks on the outside of my workshop. This will keep the kids' fingers away from the exhaust, nice and discreet. So I'm just wiring up the 12 volt inputs to the mains using this transformer. This transformer I got off Amazon, I think it was 20 pounds. Really good value, bargain. Next, we're gonna make the connection between the new fuel tank and the heater and then fill her up. If you look closely, you can see the fuel level displayed inside the plastic tube. She's all ready now, let's switch her on and give her a test. After a short length of time priming the fuel line, she fires up. Whoa, is it warm? Oh yes! Well that's the workshop all nice and warm now guys. Well I know what you're thinking, why would you want one of those things? Diesel's a fortune, but if someone puts diesel in a petrol car or vice versa, then that fuel can become available really cheaply. That's the end of the video guys, I'd like to thank you for watching. Like if you did, subscribe if you haven't done already, and I'll see you in the next video.